So today I'm going to do World Cup talk because there's really nothing new in the Mavericks and Cowboys camps. Uh, obviously the Cowboys are still talking about, you know, do we have a number one receiver? Tony Romo thinks we do. A lot of people don't. Does it even friggin' matter? Mavericks, uh, we're still kind of winding down the summer league and uh, there's really no news, which I think is good news. Uh, everybody seems to be healthy. Um, that's just kind of the key right now is keeping guys healthy until season starts and obviously through the season uh, if the Mavericks have any chance of getting an eight spot, which honestly, let's just hope they don't. Really kind of hope they get a top five pick again. That'd be brilliant. Anyway, World Cup soccer. 2018 Soccer World Cup. USA not participating. Didn't make it. Didn't qualify. Huge disappointment. But did that change the way people's viewing habits of the World Cup um, have gone? And uh, I'm going to have to argue that World Cup viewership is lower, but it's still just on the downcline that overall TV viewership is going. And I would say there's probably more interest in this World Cup than there has been uh, for a long time in the past. Also part of the viewership issue is that most people are at work during these matches. They've all been at 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., right? So everybody's at work because it's all happening in Russia. Uh, so the time difference kind of kills viewership as well. But I think there's a lot of viewership for this World Cup. I think a lot of people are in the office watching this on the TVs at the office, on projectors, on big screens. I think there's been high drama. It's been very exciting. Uh, and the highest drama occurred yesterday, of course, with England losing to Croatia um, in extra time. We've had so many extra time matches, so many uh, penalty kicks. Uh, matches that have gone to penalty kicks, which I think is great. I think uh, for soccer anyway, it's great. Um, as a rugby fan, um, I obviously love rugby and I'll be looking forward to the Rugby World Cup next year. But as a soccer fan, I think it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Um, Croatia deserved this. They worked pretty damn hard to get to this point, uh, beating Argentina in group stage, winning their group, and then um, beating Denmark on penalty kicks, beating Russia on penalty kicks, obviously not the hardest teams in the world, but in the highest pressure, pressure situations, they won matches. And that's what matters in these World Cups is that you know most of these matches are going to be pretty tight. Uh, because you're talking about the best teams in the world and for them to come through in those tight pressure situations uh, That's what counts especially in knockout stages and they showed England which is a very very young team outside of Ashley Young <laughs> so uh, They showed them what experience um, brings and the only consideration that I would have to take coming into Sunday uh, when they take on France for World Cup uh, title is that um, they're going to be on tired legs. They've played a lot of minutes um, and then you know they're older. They're an older team now yes with age comes experience but also old legs and uh, I know for from experience that uh your, your legs, your knees, your ankles, they only have so, so many steps, so much time in them. And this young French team with all the superstars that they have, um, man, I just think it's going to take a lot for Croatia to overcome that. I think they are going to have to play kind of the slow down style soccer to try and um, keep France from getting into open open field um, to get a, their best shot at winning. And they have the scores to do it. And then Modric in the midfield, I think, is incredible. He's really been one of the superstars of this World Cup. Um, you could say 
Mbappe, even though I think he's kind of fallen off in the last couple of matches. Um, Modric has been really incredible, and this Croatian team really came out of nowhere. I don't think there were high expectations for them coming into this World Cup. And, uh, you know, they've just, they've just, dra you know, dragged down, beat out matches. They've just won them. And uh, if they can keep it close against France, I think they're going to have a good shot. Uh, I do feel bad for all the English fans in terms of this World Cup because it was a disappointment. Um, I think despite the fact that English fans would say that they didn't have expectations coming in, so many great young players. I think there were expectations that this was going to be one of the best teams that they've had in a long time. And uh, to get to the semifinals, I think, is, is good for them. To get knocked out may actually end up being really good for them because this is a young team. Uh, and outside of Ashley Young, almost every single one of their players will probably return in four years for the 2022 um, World Cup. So I wouldn't be surprised you see them back in the semifinals at least um, in the next World Cup. So unfortunate for them to get dropped out, especially when they had a chance to play France in the finals. But we get a French versus Croatia, uh, France versus Cro Croatia finals. And uh, you know what? It'll probably live up to the billing because every single match of this World Cup has lived up to the billing. And that's it for this vlog.